There are, we're going to move on now, chilling new developments in the disappearance of Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi. According to the New York Times, top Turkish officials have concluded that the Saudi dissident and the critic of the crown prince was assassinated inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul on, quote, orders from the highest levels of the royal court. A senior official tells the Times that the operation was, quote, quick and complex, and that Khashoggi was killed within two hours of his arrival at the consulate by a team of Saudi agents who dismembered him. The image from security camera footage was obtained by a Turkish newspaper and claims to show Khashoggi walking into the consulate last Tuesday. The Washington Post reports that a squad of Saudi assassins was already in place and waiting for him. Two people with knowledge of the investigation tell the Post that the Saudis arrived in Istanbul from Riyadh that morning and checked into two hotels by the end of the day. The Post reports that the 15-member Saudi team had left the country, <coughs> departing on two private planes, one to Cairo and the other to du Dubai. The paper also reports that U.S. intelligence intercepted communications of Saudi officials discussing a plan to capture Khashoggi. The unnamed source told the Post that it's unclear if the Saudis intended to arrest and interrogate him or kill him. Khashoggi was born in Saudi Arabia and a legal resident of the United States. The, and some reporting Joe shows that he was he was trying to get papers to get married. Yeah, D David Ignatius, <clears throat> um, I, I, I just I can't even begin to contemplate what this would mean, uh, what it should mean for the United States. Uh, and, and, and our relation with Saudi Arabia, and also what this would say about the leadership of MBS mm. if he got an American, a U.S. resident, <clears throat> a Washington Post columnist, whose criticism certainly was not extreme, uh, and, and a, 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 had an assassination squad go to Turkey and dismember him with a bone saw. How does the United States of America, how does the civilized world actually deal with MBS, deal with Saudi Arabia, if in fact this is what happened? Joe, uh, my answer is that uh, the world should deal with this in a state of outrage. Uh, Jamal uh, is, I want to say, I'm not prepared to say was, is my colleague. Uh, he's mm. also been my friend for more than a decade. He is a, an outstanding journalist, a person with a passion for telling the truth. These reports are so grim, and they come now with details, the wing numbers on airplanes, the movement of cars I in Istanbul, uh, specific uh, details about how the sources who are talking to the Washington Post and the New York Times say this, this crime. Uh, was committed. It's the Middle East, so I want to wait for confirmation. I, I mm -hmm. think all of us have learned to be careful about waiting to know uh, with a, a firm confirmation. But if these reports are true, I think the only response uh, uh, from reasonable governments, certainly from the news organizations that are trying to cover this part of the, of the world is, is to say this is a fundamental break. It's a, it's a flagrant violation uh, of the rules that should operate. Uh, and it just has to be uh, unacceptable, intolerable. Uh, and I, I just trust our government, Donald Trump's administration, is making that clear to Saudi Arabia right now. Well, they, they are uh, so close, Mike Barnacle. The administration is so close to Saudi Arabia. Jared Kushner is so close to MBS. Uh, Donald Trump was flattered because the Saudis flashed uh, his image up on buildings on one of his first foreign trips. And he's a sucker for that sort of thing. And he completely collapsed, uh, uh, caved into it. And so the question now is, will Donald Trump keep playing dumb, as he did yesterday when he was asked about it? Or is he going to start putting pressure on Saudi Arabia to give us some answers and also Turkey to uh, let us get in there and investigate and do whatever needs to be done? This, this is an outrage and, and MBS has to be uh, not just called out, 
uh, but has to be shunned by the world community if, in fact, he's doing this to Washington Post columnists. Well, Joe, that's a key question. And the Post piece is both riveting and, and truly disturbing at, at several different mm -hmm. levels. But perhaps the largest question uh, this raises is did the administration in Saudi Arabia, did the, did, the, did the royal administration in Riyadh figure that they were so comfortable in their relationship with Donald Trump that, that they could get a green light internally to do what they allegedly have done and get away with it without the United States and, doing and, anything and, and Mike, like that? Mike, let's underline exactly what that is before you go on. What Did they get a green light to kill a resident of the United States, correct, who is David Ignatius's colleague, and writes at the Washington Post. Did Donald Trump, who has always been critical of the Washington Post, always been critical of his ownership, did anybody in the administration, did Jared Kushner, did they give uh, MBS sort of a nod and a wink to say it's okay? We need answers. Well, I, I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't go that far. That specific. But but did they feel I, such I, a level I, I'm of comfort? I'm just asking. The, I'm asking the question. I'm asking the question because Donald Trump's not giving us any answers. Th that's right. So so the, the the question to be answered is: Was there such a level of comfort between Riyadh and the White House that they felt that they could do practically anything? That there would be no pushback? from Washington, given what they perceive to be such a level of comfort between the two uh, countries. David Ignatius, in the reporting from your newspaper in the Washington Post, it says that the U United States Intelligence Committee intercepted the Saudis talking about plans to intercept Jamal um, and to capture Jamal and to do God knows what else to Jamal. Um, Senator Bob Corker, the chair of foreign relations, said yesterday he had a call with the Saudi ambassador. This is a quote from Senator Corker. It was not a great conversation. I asked asked him for the videotape showing Jamal leaving. He shared with me that they only live stream their tapes. I've never heard of an embassy in my life that doesn't tape. That's from Senator Corker. What would the United States intelligence community do with that information, and should they act on it immediately? So, Willie, I think you put your finger on, on a key question. Uh, put aside the, the issue of a green light. I think uh, uh, MBS in, in Saudi Arabia thinks Donald Trump has his back and is confident he wouldn't ask approval to do something. But if our intelligence community had word that something like this was being planned against a resident uh, of, of the United States, uh, against a Washington Post contributor, it seems to me they had an obligation to do something. And that's one of the questions I think we're going to focus on as we try to hold people accountable for what appears to be a terrible uh, crime that was committed against one of, uh, one of our colleagues. But if they had this intelligence and took no action, that's, that's truly shocking to me. David, I just go back to thinking about what you just said about holding people accountable. Back in May 2017, when the president attended the Arab uh, Islamic American Summit, he said, we're not here to tell people how to live and basically was trying to get a pass on the human rights issue. I think that maybe perhaps the message that comes from this president telling people we're not here to lecture you, we're going to let you do what you have to do, we're going to do what we have to do, perhaps has a chilling message more so than we ever thought. You know, well, I, you, you also, I'm just going, David. No, I think that's absolutely right. I, I think that uh, the, the, the message was you take care of your security, we trust you, you know, you guys get tough and, and we have your back, and, and we're not going to mm -hmm. ask uh, as many questions. We've seen so many different examples of that. It's not as if this is, this is the first, this is the most egregious, but it's not the first. Well, and you look at what the president's attitude has been. In that speech, you, you look even going back to December of 2015 on this show, justifying Vladimir Putin killing, assassinating journalists, in fact. Donald Trump, in December of 2015 on this show, justified Vladimir Putin assassinating journalists and assassinating political opponents, saying that he was a strong leader and that Vladimir Putin, quote, got things done. Donald Trump. He's justified extrajudicial killings in the Philippines with Duarte. They're talking about uh, how he respects him as a strong leader. And there is no doubt he has sent a message, not only to Saudi Arabia, but across the world. 
that this sort of aberrant behavior uh, would, would, would be approved by the United States. But right now, Mika, right now, Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. is lying to America and the world. Saudi Arabia, led by MBS, is lying to America and the world. We need answers. And just because the president of the United States, just because Donald Trump is playing dumb, MBS, doesn't mean we're going to play dumb. It doesn't mean the American media is going to play dumb. It doesn't mean the Washington Post, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal are going to sit back and play dumb. We're going to get answers. Yeah. They you need to start telling fool. us the truth. And Turkey needs to start cooperating more fully, Mika. We need answers. They made such a fool of President Trump with pictures for Made such a fool of him. They played him like a doll. He's a fool, but. Mm, others are not. Still ahead on Morning Joe, for years, supporters of Donald Trump have been chanting lock her up about Hillary Clinton. If they had it their way, she'd be getting a cellmate, none other than Senator Dianne Feinstein. Not hearing so much about due process anymore. Plus, Steve Kornacki joins us with a look uh, at new polling out this morning. We'll have that for you. Very busy morning. You're watching Morning Joe. We'll be right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.